All right, welcome back to the Good Morning Ninja Show. And uh, on I know say we tell on I say we get one better interview we would like do right now, and uh, it's uh, very very educative because this is not one topic where they, they affect a lot of uh, young Nigerians or even across the world. Sir. So now we will be speaking to Dr. Babajide Martins, the director of the Office of uh, the Public Defender, and we will discuss the child rights law. Oga, thank you for joining us on the show today. Yes, good morning. Thank you for inviting me. All right, sir. So, as uh, the conversation done, the myself and Olive, we're here to uh, discuss with you, and we they talk about the child right law. So, uh, yeah. we won't take begin for people we know, for people we just the house we know understand these terms to lame man. What be this child right law? Yes, what child life law means that for every child that is born, they have some rights where you don't go fit take away from them. Okay. They are in and label rights. Rights because they are human beings, just like adults. So okay. the, the child's right law is going to protect these rights so that the parents, the guardian, the citizen in general can also protect this right for the enjoyment of children. That's oh. basically what child's right law is. Okay. It is a it came out of international convention where all the country in the whole world agree that children's rights must be protected mm -hmm. and unicef is the body that is responsible for protecting the rights of children at the international level so we will they go states too as part of the government commitment government ensure that all of us that work in different government agency we have the responsibility to protect the child's right one of the very basic ones is that children of school age from 6 to 11 must be in compulsory universal primary education where you are not supposed to pay. It's compulsory and it's free. Hmm. Okay. So that's very But, you know, it's important that we have these conversations. Yesterday we celebrated Children's Day and, you know, these children have rights, but unfortunately some of these rights are being abused by the very people who are supposed to be there as their protectors, their parents and their guardians. So for the benefit of, you know, let's give them the benefit of doubt and list out some of these rights that children have. You've already mentioned the right to primary basic education, a right that yes. many children also have been deprived of as we see them walking on the streets and being sold yes. into forced labor. What are some of the other rights that children have and what are the most commonly abused ones? Yes, before I mention that, I would say the section one of the child's right law, Lagos State, said all government agencies, all everybody that's taking decision involving children, the interest of the child must be paramount. So that is the fundamental position of the law. That is section one of, of the law. So all the activities that is meant for children, the interest of the child, very paramount. For example, now, if we want to decide maybe a child to go to a particular school or the other school, whatever the child wants, if the child can express his or her view, that interest will be very paramount. Oh. So they also have a right to survive as an individual. They have a right to a name. So if a child is given a name and it becomes more knowledgeable and think that name, he doesn't like it. You can apply to the parents, want my name to be changed. Hmm. For example, name doesn't symbolize positive attributes. Yes. So they also have rights, freedom of association, rights not to be away in early marriage. In fact, the law policies that if you give a child away in early marriage or to go and work in a service as a first labor, you are responsible for that and the law provides for seven years imprisonment. So the right also includes rights to dignity of the person. So that means the individual must be treated as an uh, as a as a person on his own, even though it's below 18. So you cannot do things that will indignify young person. For example, now you cannot take them into the public and start on taking off their clothes and beating them just in the name of punishment or wanting to teach them some morals. You are not allowed to do such thing. They also have rights to health services. Most health services in the state for children will be free, whereas okay. some would 
they have to pay some money for children. Most health practices will be free for children. These are all the rights which the, 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 the law provides that children should be protected and have. Of course, I've also said they have rights to parental care. But you know when parents are seen to be abusing the children yeah. or guardian, the law allow us to take the children away from the child, from the guardian of the parents hmm. and keep them in safe custody of a foster parent or even give them up for adoption. So all these are rights that are very, very important. Also, you know, we, we say something in law, there are no rights without responsibility. Mm -hmm. The children also have responsibility to cooperate and behave well when they are in school, to cooperate and behave well when they are in public environment, you know, to do what is expected of them as children. So there are no rights without correlating responsibility. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that I just want to emphasize. More importantly, like we said, children should not be sent to off the street. Children should not be to house girl or to, to, to enforce labor. The only time children are allowed to work is if they are working in a family business. And the nature of the work is very, very light. It's not as hard as it's not very typical that injurious to their health and when they that's when children are allowed to work. They are only allowed to work as part of apprentice training. So you cannot send them to go and work when they are below 18. Mm -hmm. so those, are the, those are the things that I just want to... I think more importantly is, is the need to protect child from, not from economic exploitation, sexual exploitation, physical abuse. All those are very, very important. And the law is there in places, a government institution like my Office of Public Defender, we are here to protect the rights of the children. Also, domestic violence and sexual responsibility, you know, the Ministry of Justice in, um, under the auspices of the General and Solicitor General, we have the citizens which also protect the rights of the citizens. So there is a gamut of institutions that protect the rights of children as citizens of this country. And all those rights are very important. All right. It's important that you've mentioned all these rights. Now, there's a Latin maxim that says, ubi juice, ibi remedium, meaning where there's a right, there's a remedy. Now that we've mentioned all these rights, in the case where there's a legal wrong done or there's a breach of this right, what is the remedy available? Yes. If, if there is a breach of this right, the parents, if they are involved with the breaching, can sue as a next friend to children whose rights are abused or breach, that if the parents are not involved in the abuse or in the breach of the right. Also, the parents can also access government facility and institution that is charging the responsibility of protecting the rights of children. Like my office now, all of our fundamental foundation protect the interest and well-being of children. And you know, I, I mentioned in one of the Children's right law. It's an obligation on all organizations, all institutions, to ensure that in taking any decision involving children, the right of the children is paramount. Mm -hmm. So, for example, now, if there are children whose parents die in times that is without living a week, we can make application of children on behalf of the children to get them some of the legacy party that belongs to their, to their father. That, yeah. That's some of the rights to which they are entitled to. When you have places like Big Defender, you also have places like the Office of Public Administrator, trustees, and also bring application on behalf of children whose rights in free in relation to their debt, family, to their parents' property so that they are not exposed to any hardship and their economic interest is not, is not affected negatively. Then this is the case where the rights um, that has been affected is you know, the parents are not involved in the breach of the rights. Where the parents yeah. are the perpetrators of this breach, 
and for example, no adult around can see what is going on, and there's a child watching this, and the child has been abused constantly or consistently, or even if it's just once by their parents, what can they do? Yes, you see the other thing is that there has been an executive order in Lagos, which is called mandated. Anybody who is allowed, who is aware of a child being a so it's right being infringed on, has an obligation to report that to constituted authority. So teachers at school, nurses, government workers, health care officials, social workers, anybody who is aware that child's right being abused or a child is being treated has an obligation to report to the authority. If they fail to report to the authority, there is consequential action that, that can even put their job line. So I would encourage parents, I would encourage teachers in school, be attentive to be vigilant, to be able to identify online traits of abuse so that they can bring it to the attention of the school authority who will work in conjunction with the Office of Public Defender or the Ministry of Education to make sure that they find out what are the problems that causes those infringements of the right to be able to bring out a regime of protection for that child. So everybody that works with children have a statutory responsibility to report cases of abuse that has come to their knowledge. So you, might, so you see a child who is unduly quiet, necessarily extremely, you know, drawing. You know there's something going on. The child is being up. So you need to take child confidence to be able to speak to him or her to find out what the issue is. And you'll be obliged to request to the authority. So those, those are the response. And I can confirm you, there have been so many cases of child abuse from private school, how we got from teachers or some child workers reported the case in confidence and government agencies and institutions have been able to go and show prosecutions. I don't want to mention things, but there are private schools that recently we've convicted their school teachers for abusing sexual some of the students in their care. So all those information will go through social workers or some other workers that are working in that organization who will give information in confidence and anonymously to the authorities. So if I receive information in confidence or anonymously from any members of public, child is being abused, have a statutory responsibility to ensure that I carry out an and bring remedy for that child. So we have a gamut of Opportunity to unravel child abuse and be able to do something about it. And of course, you know, we work in collaboration with other NGOs and other government mm. departments, you know, Ministry for Social Youth and uh, Ministry for Youth and Social Development, Ministry for Women Affairs and Poverty Elevation, Ministry of Justice, Citizens' Rights, all these government agencies. As mandatory, we have an obligation to investigate and report any concern about child abuse. Thank you. All right, sir. Thank you very much for this uh, very, very insightful uh, um, conversation regarding the child right law. And uh, I want to ask one final question because uh, I, I see say you don't even throw some light on top of because um, the, the situation, we say this is for, for, the, for, for the child right law, is for the children. How has uh, your organization um, done sensitization directly to the children? Based on, say, if uh, Peking now, they, uh, how, how do you get directly to them to educate them on these laws so that if they see, say, some kind of thing that happened to them, they go, no, say, ah, this is abuse or this is not abuse. How much of sensitization has your organization decided to uh, put thank in place? Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that. I didn't pay not for the lockdown. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, being Children's Day, I would have been in school, and some of my officers in different school in sensitizing children about their rights. Okay. So that's one of the major ways for us to ensure that children are aware of their rights mm -hmm. so that they can know that 
where they are right being accused or threatened, there is a government department, which is Office of Public Defender, that can come to their aid. Mm -hmm. so do that sensitization by going to different schools. But I'm sure you know that the schools are very session now yes. because of lockdown. Yes. But as soon as the school is going to go around in different areas, and like I said, the last time I was on this, we have offices in Ekpe, okay. Urodu, Agri, Ajegule, and Aja. Okay. So we have officers in all these different areas who will also embark on school sensitization program. So as soon as the school is do that through sensitization of the uh, of children in order for them to, to, to raise awareness, because like you rightly said, some of them might not even know what is that happening to being, them. Exactly. Exactly. Because of their very tender mm -hmm. so there is need for us to say, look, this is your body, mm -hmm. this is your week, this is your private part. Mm -hmm. No teacher, no person has the right to teach it. You know, nobody has the right to touch your combo. Mm -hmm. Nobody has the right to touch your willing. Nobody has the right to, you know, fondle with you and all this kind yeah. of thing. So yes. all these are part of my responsibility director of um, office of public defender to sensitize the children and also we also sensitize parents as well mm -hmm. because at times the abuse might not be coming directly from the parents the abuse might be coming from neighbors yes people who live in the same household have a community same community with the parents and children so there is need for them to be sensitized, especially with the law where you don't have children, you have a lot of adults that are locked down with them in different houses and communities. It is safe for the parent to be vigilant, to be, be to be alive to their responsibility, protecting right. their children. Thank you that very much. Part of Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you, you very much. much. And now for people watching who might be in need of the services that you're Organization Brenders, please. How can they get in touch with you? Yes, like, uh, like um, I'll just mention we are on Facebook at OPD Lagos, we're on Twitter at OPD Lagos, and uh, all the social platforms. Yeah, yeah, so people can send message to us once you put OPD or Office of Public Defender on any of the social, especially Facebook. Our details are there. And our office is two to eight in your road in Surulere by Barak Post And also we have a we have a, a website as we well. can get more information about our activities and our and our mandate. OPD Lagos dot org. Once you Google that, you see all the information, phone number of all friend offices. My phone number. 090 You can reach me on that number. And for people who want to bring in petition, our office is open to receive petition. Although we are not going to allow to come into the office, but we can take the petition and take that information from you at the gate post, and we'll be able to look to it and give you um, any assistance. Because if there is need for us to put up the court are open with an emergency application to remove a child that is from the appearance. So, so the lockdown doesn't affect activities in terms of emergency children applications All right. as well. Thank you very Thank much, you. sir, for joining us. Thank you very much for that. Thank we hope you. that everyone has been able to get down these numbers and these social media handles because it's important that we look out for ourselves, for our children. They say that it takes a community to raise a child and it takes every one of us being vigilant and being able to spot abuse where it is happening because these children cannot speak for themselves sometimes or most times they need us to speak for them. So thank you very much for joining us, sir. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.